For the New York Times editorial board called for President Biden to drop out. One of his advisors told CNN today that not only would he not exit the race, quote, there's nothing that voters have indicated that they agree with that. A uh, reminder that it's what voters who will ultimately decide whether Biden's age or Trump's lies and character issues are the most important factors in the race. Last night and today, our Gary Tuckman spent time speaking with voters in the battleground state of Georgia who watched the debate. We talked with Georgia voters at a sports pub in Atlanta immediately after the debate was over. I'm only 25 and I see both, uh, they're both old and they're both either avoiding questions or they're both like don't know what the hell they're answering. And we talked with Georgia voters on the recreational belt line that surrounds Atlanta after everyone had the night to think about the debate. I don't necessarily feel confident in either candidate's ability to run a country. We had conversations with dozens of Georgians many of them very uninspired. I hate that it's between these two guys because I, I don't like one candidate more than the other. I would like a younger candidate on both parties. The headline, um, old man versus con man, really resonated with me. Before the debate, were you leaning towards Biden, Trump, or undecided? Probably leaning towards Biden. After this debate, how do you feel? Uh, without a home. Many who voted for Joe Biden in 2020 and support him currently are frankly depressed. My genuine hope is that perhaps somebody else will step up for that nomination. On the Democrats? Yes, sir. These two women say they are strong Biden supporters, but watching the debate was difficult. I was concerned, very, very concerned about Biden's real ability to carry this nation forward just from a physical perspectives. Do you feel the same way? Yes. I care about where our country is going to be rather than who delivered the most stellar debate on stage. And I care about who tells the truth, who's going to keep me safe, who's actually going to do things for the country. I don't feel like that's Trump. Speaking of former President Donald Trump, many Georgians leaning towards voting for him tell us that President Biden's debate performance was not at all surprising to them. I thought he sounded uh, unsure, um, rather confused and uh, not well prepared, sorry to say. I think that the Biden, you know, looked sad. Um, Trump, Trump was Trump. Here in the Beltline and back at the Wicked Wolf Sports Pub, voters we talked to who had already decided to vote for President Biden still plan to. And voters who support Donald Trump aren't planning to abandon him at the ballot box either. But we did find a few undecideds who may be on the verge of a decision. I thought that Trump, in this debate, and in, in overall, I think he's more reasonable and more cogent and more, yeah, thoughtful than, than, than what he was uh, four years ago. I'm undecided, but I'm thinking of voting for Trump. Yeah, I was pretty undecided. Neither what are you one... thinking now? I'm leaning more towards uh, Biden. And we also found some people who feel like this woman. I think that we could all benefit as a country from someone uh, other than the two options that we have today. Um, one is a convicted felon and uh, the other was unable to coherently um, explain his stance yesterday. So who do you vote for? I'm not sure if I will vote because of it. Now, Anderson, we did talk to three people who say they will definitely vote for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. One of those men says he voted for Trump four years ago. One of them says Joe Biden four years ago. One of them didn't want to say. But what they all have in common is all of them say they were not inspired by what they heard at the debate. Mm. Anderson. Gary, Gary Tuckman, thanks so much. New York Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman joins us now. Congressman, appreciate you being with us. Um, so, I mean, some people within your party are wondering if President Biden should step aside, but Cory Sellers was on earlier tonight just saying that's not going to happen and just, it, it's just impossible. Um, the New York Times editorial board, as you know, has called for him to do so. What do you think? Look, I, I think everyone needs to calm down a little bit. It was a bad night. <clears throat> there was a poor performance. But one night does not make a campaign. And it does not erase three and a half years of stellar leadership that has brought our country back to the forefront on a global stage, has protected democracy around the world and here at home, and has benefited the vast majority of Americans, the lower class, middle class Americans, through some historic, historic legislation. 
And when you compare what you saw from Joe Biden last night to what you saw from Donald Trump, you realize that this is a choice, ultimately, in November, of someone who is a decent, honest in, uh, man of integrity, who has served his country his entire life, against a felon who is an inveterate liar and only cares about himself. And so, yes, the New York Times is correct. The stakes are very high. But let's not go with this double standard where we just normalize Donald Trump's absurd behavior and uh, absolute outrageous lies of denying January 6th, his refusal to accept the results of the election, his pride at uh, overturning Roe v. Wade and taking reproductive freedom away. That is what the choice is. That's who we're dealing with here. And ultimately, it's convenient for The New York Times to say, oh, Joe Biden should step down. Why aren't they saying that Donald Trump should step down? They're just always apologizing and normalizing for Donald Trump. And frankly, Anderson, that's what happened last night on the debate stage. Nobody fact-checked Donald Trump when he was blatantly lying over and over and over again. Well, does it concern you that, I mean, the, the president of the United States did not do that or was not able to, to do that in real time, I mean, in, in a debate against his opponent? No, it doesn't concern me. I mean, look at the State of the Union, right? It was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Look at how he was today on the campaign trail in North Carolina. Uh, he had an off night. He had an off night. People have an off night, and he's, he's older than, than most. For sure, you're going to have some off nights. But let's remember, the job of the president is not to respond instantaneously in a debate. You are governing the country. You are making critical, important decisions, getting information from the staff that you hire, the administration that you build, and you're using all of that information to make decisions and to pass legislation and to defend our democracy. And that is what Joe Biden has done so well, surrounding himself with outstanding staff members. 40 of 44 of Donald Trump's senior staff members will not endorse him. They worked for him and they refused to endorse him. And what he will hire will be political hacks, extremists, who will bring our country down. And that's the critical difference here. Do you think there should be another, I mean, there is another debate uh, that they have both agreed to do. Do you, would you want that to take place? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think Joe Biden had an off night. It was a poor performance. There's no question about it. And no one is saying anything different. But let's have another debate. Let's see what, what happens uh, on, a, on a different night. Let's see whether, you know, Donald Trump continues to lie over and over, to deny his role in January 6th, uh, to uh, proudly say that he increased the deficit more than any other president by reducing taxes on the super wealthy. He is blatantly mischaracterizing the disaster that was his presidency, and that got a lot of attention and didn't get a lot of pushback. No. But let's have another debate where actually the moderators will push back on Donald Trump's lies. He intimidated your network, unfortunately, and there was no pushback. He was given free reign to just lie as much as he wants, and that's not helpful to the American public either. Yeah, I don't know about the intimidation part, but uh, I wasn't part of the, the discussions on, on any of this. But obviously, in a debate, it is the primary job of the opponent to, you know, have a direct counter and rebuttal to what somebody else is saying. And clearly, the, the, the president was not able to do that. Uh, we will see, obviously, in another debate if, if that would change. Congressman Goldman, I appreciate your time. Thank you.